programming is fun. Hey, welcome back to the login program series. This is going to be part three. If you're new to the channel or just new to programming, welcome aboard. Programming is one of the funnest things you can do. It's like the ultimate sandbox, except you can throw sand in other kids' eyes. I always got in trouble when I did that. All right, so we're gonna open up our project file. So in the last video, we took a look at saving our passwords and our usernames on a separate text document. So right now, as it sits, anybody could come onto our computer, check out this file, and then they'd hack the bank and there goes the farm and all of our investment money. That's no good. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at using a variation of the Caesar cipher algorithm. It sounds so complicated, it's just adding. You're just adding three to a letter. And when I said variation, we're gonna use the same sort of principle except we're gonna make it more complicated so it's not just adding three and then subtracting three. So first, let's go into our code into main.cbp. Let's scroll down and we're gonna create a new function. This is going to be called int because it's going to return an integer. And an integer is just a number that's not a fraction and not a decimal, pretty much. So integer, and we're gonna call this encrypt. So this is where we're actually gonna do our encryption algorithm. It's going to take an integer and you might be thinking well shouldn't we be giving it like a character or maybe a string would be a better option the reason we're going with an integer is because characters and strings are just integers so the letter a has a specific number assigned to it and because it's actually you can read it in a number it grants us the ability to manipulate letters as if they're numbers mathematically so we're gonna take p underscore letter again p underscore just sends, says it's a parameter and open up a body so a body is inside two squirrely braces and inside there we're gonna go return so it's just gonna be a one-liner so return and let's just go with our p underscore letter and then plus three for now so this is just gonna mix up the ascii code a little bit and just shift it forward by three but we're gonna make this more complicated let's just start simple and get a working model and then we can make it as complicated as you should like so the next thing is int decrypt so everything that we just did in encrypt which wasn't all that much we have to do the reverse in decrypt so it's going to take an integer as a parameter and p underscore letter and open up a body for it so that's two squarely braces make sure you space it up nice and inside here, we're going to go return again, pretty much the same thing. And the only difference will be instead of adding three, we're just going to subtract three like so. Yeah, that's better. So what we're going to do is we're going to save every character of our password and our username as a number. So then E would become the ASCII code equivalent of E, which I don't know that off the top of my head. What Marty, you're a nerd. You should know that. I am a nerd. Yes, but I don't know that. I just, I just. I just don't know. And then what we can do to make it real easy to tell ourselves w to differentiate between letters is we just space it out like so. So these will all become letters and then at the f and then finally to say that we are done, we're going to save it as a zero at the end. So this way it's going to check until it's the zero. So that's basically the plan. So let's go back to main CPP and right after get file, we're going to create a void because it's not going to return anything. It's just going to save it. So void will be save file now even though this is save file is like the reverse of get file it doesn't have to be a string because we're not returning anything we're just doing something so we're going to take a parameter and that will be a string of text so string p underscore text the second parameter will be the file you want to save it in so that will be another string or actually let's just go with a constant character pointer which a constant character pointer isn't as manipulatable as a string is. Like strings you can do all sorts of stuff with. Constant character pointers are a lot more limited, but that takes a lot less memory and that's the advantage of using them. So that will be p underscore file path. Open up a body for that. I feel like we should change instead of file path, it should be just file name because it includes the name in it too. A little more explicit. The first thing we're going to create is an f stream object. So f stream and then file and make sure you end that line with a semicolon. Hit enter and we're gonna go file.open. So let's open that sucker up. The file we shall open is p underscore line, no not line, um, p underscore file name. And then the second parameter is ios colon colon in, I mean out. We did in up here because we're reading and since we're writing in this case, we gotta go out. You don't have to use this flag if you create a of stream like if you go of stream then you don't need that flag it already knows it's going out but it's fine we can just have this ios here because those two colons look 
like they're doing something and they look professional so we're gonna roll with it and end a semicolon to that we're gonna create a for loop and the reason we're going with the for loop is we're gonna be encrypting every single element within the string which in a string is just an array of characters and for loops are really good with working with arrays if you're now if you're thinking is there a better way you could do this like can't we just use an if statement here you definitely could there's a thousand different ways to program this that's the beauty of programming as long as it works and it's not a terribly broken code it's good to go at least that's what i keep telling myself you want to make sure your code is fast if it's fast and it's secure and it's not breaking it's good code it doesn't really matter which style you use so for we're going to create an integer in here int i equals zero and you have to use a semicolon within for loops you need to have the semicolon in there because if you don't the program just basically sells the farm and we don't want that to happen that's because a for loop is essentially an if statement just written a little bit weirdly with a little bit of syntax with it so and we're going to perform a check so we're going to go if i is less than so to make sure it's not greater than p underscore line dot length so this check just makes sure that we don't keep writing even after we're done writing the line because that's that's just gonna i don't know what that would actually do I, I i feel like it would break it but you know add a semicolon there and we're gonna go i plus plus every iteration open up a body for it and inside here we're gonna go file and then two angular brackets so pretty much just like co except instead of printing something to the console we're reading the first character in p underscore line and to make sure we're just not reading the whole line and just the character we go with uh, i but this is just any old letters we're not doing anything special to it let's throw in that magic ingredient which is encrypt p underscore line and make sure you move that semicolon there we go good good hit enter and we're gonna go file and we're also gonna read in a new line so to do that go backslash in it's a special case character which just says create a new line and then we're gonna add a semicolon the reason we create the new line again is so we can differentiate between characters so it's not just one long string of text once our program hits the end of that line we're gonna go right here and we're just gonna give it a file we're gonna write a zero at the end of it just so that it signifies that we finished that word a semicolon there and file dot clues and another semicolon control save so let's see if this works scroll down into our main function and instead of app dot login let's just go app dot save file and of course the string so we can say anything really let's let's just say grape juice it's, it's fine and add a comma the second parameter is the file which was just pass passwords abbreviated passwords dot dat control save and we should in passwords dot data here we should get some encrypted letters compile and run it the hotkey on sublime is f7 nothing showing up no errors so it looks good let's go to passwords dot data and it looks like it's working if we go to main dot cbp let's see how many letters is that it's one two three three nine ten and if we go to passwords.data that's ten so that's working perfectly it's not saving any more characters than it should be excellent so we're saving correctly let's see if we can read correctly so let's scroll up and right where we go get file we're going to start by creating a integer right here so hit enter this will be what did it just do okay kind of shifted it so we're going to go int and this will be let's go with encrypted character Kind of a long one so let's just go with ink crit car or how about e char that's fine so this is just the encrypted character that we read in the reason we're going with an integer is because it's saved as an integer and we want to keep it an integer until we're done decrypting it and then we convert it to a character and add it to our line next thing we'll do is we'll replace this if statement with a while loop so while and we'll go with while one Anytime you see a while one, it's just a loop that will happen infinitively unless there's a control flow statement, which control flow statements are return, continue, break. I feel like there's one more. Return, continue, break. And the last one is go to. So in a while loop, instead of tucking the number, the first number or the first letter number, straight inside of our line, we don't want to do that. We're going to tuck that inside of E character which is encrypted character next we're going to perform a check to make sure it's not a zero so if e character 
if e character is equal to zero, which would signify that we're at the very end of this word, which would be our password, then we're just going to go return line. Now we can't just go return line because we also have to close the file. If we just went return line, it would skip this function altogether. So let's just grab these, cut them, and we're gonna paste them right in there. And then we're gonna reformat them because that looks so ugly. There, that's better. So then if the character isn't zero, which means we're at the end, then we're gonna decrypt it. So then we're gonna go, we're gonna go line plus equals with strings it has this overloaded function that just goes like plus equals and then you can add strings together and add characters so we're going to go add we're going to cast this to character so character so open some parentheses and then character and then decrypt e character e character there we go let's check and see if that works control save scroll down instead of save file we're going to go get file so app dot get file and the file will be passwords dot data if we do this by itself we won't be able to see anything and we want to see what what we actually have so let's go see out and then make sure we have a end line at the end here and l two angular brackets right there of course control save and that should should print out grape juice but it, it didn't we have an error and that's right where we go get line the function get line can't use an integer as a parameter which is fine there's always one more way to skin a cat than you would think so let's just go backspace and let's add some of those angular brackets except reversed right here so luckily we have this little overloaded function that allows us to take in an integer it's the equivalent event of just saying file dot get and then e character right so control save and hit f7 and we should see grape juice Perfect, we got a grape juice. And if we check our program, we should not, if we go control F and we try and look for grape juice, we should not be able to see it uh, one little bit. Grape juice, nope, it's not even there. It only exists in passwords.data and it only exists as these numbers. All right, so we got all these functions kicking around. Let's just stitch them back together a minute so that we can get our previous prototype working again with the decryption device or decryption function. So let's scroll down. Instead of just seeing out our password here, we're just going to go app.login once again, login, control save, we'll scroll up and it should actually work because it just returns line. So control save, hit F7, first our username which was user, user at email.com, enter. What was it? User at email.com. Ah. Okay, I see what happened. The program doesn't work because we forgot to encrypt our username yet. So it's trying to decrypt it, but it doesn't really know what to do with that. So let's scroll down. Let's just encrypt it real quick. So let's go app.save file, and it's gonna save to, I forget which parameter came first, I believe. Yeah, first it's the line. So this will be user at email.com. Of course, we've got to throw that in quotes, otherwise it's just not going to know what to do. And then the second parameter will be the file name, and that's users.data. Control save, that should give us, if we hit F7 and run it, we won't get much printing on the screen, but we should have in users.data. Perfect, we got ourselves our encrypted message. Let's go back to main CVP. While we're here, we still have our passwords and our username hard-coded into our program. We don't want to do that. It's just Take that out and now if we return this to app.login we should actually have a working prototype a username is required it should be user at at email.com enter perfect and then the password would be grape juice hey that's all right perfect so this is working exactly the way we want it in the next video we're going to create a function that allows us to sign up to the program and then this way instead of having to write change your code every time we want to change your password We'll just have it so that we can type it in through the console. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments or anything to say, just let me know down below. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Code like, and I'll see you next video.